talk about that right after, right after we talk to our next guest for the last time. Oh, ever? Maybe. Don't no. know. Hey, off season comes just like the franchise. Yeah. You got to look at free agents. You got to look <laughs> at the draft. Yeah, look around now. We're happy with the talent we have. We're keeping this guest. But we're always looking to improve. How no. could you not if you want to win a championship? I can't imagine a better guest than Katie Christensen. That's but tough love right there. It's a heavy draft going on right now. I shouldn't have said heavy draft. It's a it's a big talent-filled draft there you go. going on right now. Wow. Wow. Shade. Oh, wow. Like, wow. Hi, Katie. Good morning, fellas. <laughs> Hi. Good morning. <laughs> different yeah, tone very di- <laughs> hi jason good morning hi. yeah uh you, you busy katie you busy these days you got a busy week uh, i like asking katie that katie is the queen of she can't not have a ridiculously busy it doesn't matter she could have nothing planned tomorrow and by this afternoon it'll be yeah i have to go do this and then that and then i'm gonna go this and then i'm going to the shelter to volunteer for four uh, her, her that's her life her life <laughs> yeah you can't just have a day off. Season, it's off season well, for you. It's funny that you should ask. Hmm. Tomorrow I actually move, so I'm in the middle of moving right now. So I just had Shelby yeah, on it, last hour talking about you. Oh, did you? Yeah. yeah, that was that was fantastic. He literally got me my house. It was amazing. Yeah, it was. He's an amazing guy. Dave, Katie, you'll need your help to move. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I would never ask. No. Dave. I asked oh. him once when I moved back in 2013, and he came over and helped me move my piano, and that was it. That's I came over to piano. That's that was a big the task? deal. Well, that's wow. the thing. It's, like, it's so lame. It's like, get off your wallet, which credit to Katie, she's doing. Yeah. And, and get Listen, hey, can you come give me free labor all day and I'll get you pizza? Right. No. All day? Dave. No, I'm not talking about you. Your entire man cave. Come on now. I just, I just credited get you. Get off by, your wallet. I'm just saying. <laughs> Jeez. Um, Katie, I have a, there's a lot of stuff to get to here, Kingswise. I, I, I have a left field question for you. Um, be, and, and, and quite frankly, I'm kind of, I, I didn't know about this. LeBron James made some news yesterday with a tweet and, and I, I want to know how you feel about it. Being an ex WNBA player, I did not know that the WNBA requires draft entrance to be at least 22 years old, the year in which the, the draft takes place and have no remaining college eligibility or renounce any future college eligibility whatsoever. Three of the six players on the AP's first team are going back to school next year rather than getting drafted early. And this seems like one of those things that you find every once in a while somebody has to shed light on, and you look and you go, wait a minute, how how is how in the world is that fair, and what is the reasoning behind it? Oh, well, I mean, I, I have thoughts on this too. Like my, my rookie year in the WBA, one of the players that I played with was 18 years old. Um, she was Australian, so she had so many years of, uh, you know, foreign international basketball experience as a professional. So that kind of canceled everything out. But, you know, especially when the league first started 25 plus years ago, um, who knew what was going to happen? And I, even on the NBA side, I am a proponent of being in college longer than a year. Um, It's a little bit different on the NBA side because their opportunity uh, to make a lot more money is greater than than female players. That's just the reality of the world right now. I mean, female players are making more money now than when I was. But in terms of longevity of a career, if you look at your career being like maybe you're going to make it to 35, and that is that is a stretch for a lot of players, especially in the WNBA, because they play year round without a stop at all. Um, because they go straight from the WNBA to playing overseas and it's the wear and tear on your body. So I think that it's really important for for the education proponent. Um, but when you look at the rules, yeah, do they need to be adjusted? Probably. But uh, do I still think it's a good idea for for these players to, to get a college education and a degree? And a lot of them will, will end up having like a master's before they're done uh, with their with their college eligibility, so I don't look at that as a terrible thing. But um, I, I didn't see LeBron's tweet. I have I have not opened social media, so I don't know what he was up in arms about. Well, just basically that. That I mean, men can go, you can go right yeah. out of college, and, and the women can't. But on that note, Katie, where would you say is? Well, can I just say? Can yeah. I just interrupt and just say maybe LeBron should be uh, tweeting about the fact that women should be making more money. 
Yeah. Like maybe that, sh- maybe that should be something that he's, he's also kind of, yeah. you know, talking about. Have we ever, know, but- I'm, I'm sorry, have we, and we'll move on, we'll move on to Kings. I, I get it. Have we ever, I'd, I'd love to see a study, the whole making more money thing always, it, it always sticks in my head because it's obviously a very controversial conversation. And they're, they're, of course, I'd love to see everybody make more money. Has there ever been a study that shows what WNBA players are paid in 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 uh, what percentage of basketball related income BRI goes to WNBA players versus NBA players? Because the arguments always well hold on you can't pay them more because the league doesn't make any money, which isn't true. But I'd like to know what the the percentage is, even if that means WNBA players are making a quarter. I don't know what the number is of what NBA players are. The percentages should be in line. We can, I think we can find a common ground. That I'm, the I'm sure there, yeah, yeah I'm sure find there is. And, and I'm not saying, hey, that a WNBA player, you know, for playing for what three, four months, should be making, you know, sure. two point five million dollars. That's not what I'm saying. But I, I will say that there is a great discrepancy. Yeah, I, yeah. No, I hear you. Too. And that's why they go. A lot of females go overseas, right? right. I mean, like, there's more money to be made over there. Absolutely. I yeah. mean, you can go and make two, three times what you're making in the WNBA playing overseas. Yeah. Katie, uh, when we moving on to the Kings, one of the things I had in my head I wanted to ask you, we ended the last segment on this. Uh, Alvin Gentry dismissed this week, um, and, and who knows? He may stay in a front office role. He may go somewhere else. I don't know. But nobody in this town knows Alvin better than you. Uh, you you go way back with him to Phoenix and, and beyond, and I uh, just wanted you to, to have a moment to – he was in an impossible spot. Uh, I, I we all knew pretty much this was going to happen, but doesn't mean dude isn't a good guy and a good coach. Alvin is an amazing human being, and obviously he's been around the league for a long time. And you know, um, so I, I don't think that you know for a lot of coaches when they're not retained, I think that maybe it's a different experience. Uh, Alvin's been there so many times. He's He's had a long, long career in the NBA, so I don't think it quite feels the same as, say, you know, maybe Luke Walton when he was let go, right? But I think it still hurts to a certain degree. Um, but on the flip side, like, listen, I understand the process, right? I understand that Monty McNair, in his time as a, a general manager here, has not hired his own coach, which I think is something that is really important if you're trying to have success, right? If you're putting, uh, you know, kind of the ball in the court of the general manager, uh, pardon the pun, uh, to build a team around what he thinks is a, a winning team, you have to be on the same page as the head coach. And there's been a lot of roster changes. There's a bit of, been a lot of change over the last couple of years um, on both the you know the coaching staff as well as the the roster. And so I think it's really important um, for the possibility of success for the general manager to be able to do that. Katie, I'm thinking about the next step. Then the new coach. Um... De'Aaron Fox was with us yesterday. He talked about a desire for structure. That's what he wanted. That's what he's coveted in his time here. And, you know, as we look at that, as you look at Sabonis as a foundation piece, you've watched this team. What, in your mind, is the type of style or type of personality coach that this group needs to be the best that they can be? Dang, Jason. I mean, that's the the million-dollar question, right? And, you know, I had to sit down um, the day after the season ended with both De'Aaron and uh, Domas, and that's going to be coming out um, on the Kings' website here soon. And it was really an enlightening conversation, and he did talk about the structure component, right? And I think that, you know, a lot of people assume that a player wants, a, you know, a lot of freedom as a player, but not every, very few players actually are structured that way. They really do need structure within an offense and understanding of what the goals are um, in terms of, you know, building up an offense, get, making the most of it, making the most of everybody's talent, putting people in the right positions. And so, you know, like you look at it, Mike D'Antoni is very much um, Alvin Gentry's, kind of uh, thought process in coaching. I mean, Alvin came up behind Mike D'Antoni. Mike's been in the league for a long time. He had James Harden in, in Houston. And, like, I don't know if that is the type of structure that, um, like, De'Aaron is talking about. So I think that that's something that, like, Monty McNair needs to look at uh, is what coach that is available is going to be able to provide that. And I think that they do need to play with speed, but you can play with speed within a structured offense, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but it's about taking advantage of early offense transition. Um, and to be honest, I really think that this team needs someone that has a, a really good defensive mind. Uh, 
that also translates to offense because there's so much talent on this team in terms of speed, quickness, and then you look at, you know, uh, Dante DiVincenzo, and he's an unrestricted free agent this year, so we've got to see what happens in the offseason with him, but if you pair him with, you know, alongside Davion Mitchell, and then after the trade, we saw De'Aaron Fox playing way more defense on, on a level and creating offense than we had before, and I think that's because he was all of a, all of a sudden not only surrounded by better defenders, but he also had a lot of the pressure taken off of him on the offensive end because Domas facilitated a lot of things. So I think that you know when you look at it, you have to look at what your roster ends up being, and a coach that is going to be able to to stress defense to focus on offense, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure does. We'll see what happens in the off season whether it's the Sacramento Kings or 8 o'clock spot on Wednesdays. Katie, I hope to have you wow. back. I hope to, Listen, I personally <laughs> hope to have you back. I do. I think that I speak for the whole team here, but, you know, you also got to negotiate Katie's contract, too, and she ain't cheap. Let's be okay, honest. so just so you're not confusing listeners, I am under contract next year with the Kings. You're just being a pill right now about whether or not I'm good enough to oh, be on your show. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean this show, not the Kings. Yes. I met with us, and of course, Katie will be back. She's been wonderful with us uh, all year long. Uh, the check is in the mail. Of course, uh, there's there's no yeah, check. Yeah, I've been waiting on that for a long time. <laughs> he's, he's ready to move the piano. Uh, we appreciate you. Jason and Jay will be there tomorrow to help you move. Oh. And, uh <laughs> I and, will. And nobody. And and but don't worry. Nobody will ever visit Katie because her dog's coming home soon. So. Oh jeez. Stupid dog. Thank you, Katie. <laughs> uh, love you. Love your show. Have a have a have a good move. <laughs> All right, fellas. It's been a great season. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's Katie Christensen. When That's we, a good move. <laughs> when we return, Derek Carr's rich Hosier fans, Denim fans, rejoice. We're right back.